this is all about. So before we get into this, uh, for those of you who do not know, um, I watched uh, basically almost blind the conversation between Vosh and Professor Flowers. This conversation has been cycling around and around and around and around in the discourse since it happened. Um, and there were some things about that conversation that I felt that Vosh did not handle perfectly well, but my ending conclusion was that I felt that Professor Flowers did not do a very good job. Now, a lot of people have disagreed with me on this. Um, I don't have any, you know, particular bad feelings at all whatsoever against Professor Flowers. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm friends with Vosh, so like, you know, whatever. Um, but... It turns out that a lot of people have recently published uh, videos talking about this. I watched one by a really great streamer that I like called John the Duncan. Or, uh, sorry, a bread tuber I like named John the Duncan. Um, the John the Duncan one is a little too long for us to watch on stream, but I had a lot of critiques for the, the takes that John the Duncan had. Even though I felt like the overall video was very informative, I felt that John, John the Duncan was unfair to Vosh's performance in that debate. And I think that was because of uh, an issue of it being too broad of an analysis for a um, for a conversation of that type. I'm very interested to see what this bad mouse person has to say. Now, I don't know much about bad mouse, except that they are uh, like, as far as I know, like a Marxist uh, bread tuber type. They're, per they're like more like classical Marx type. Um, which is interesting. Um, so I'm interested to hear this perspective and I want to try and, uh, sort of react to it and give my feedback because one of the things I want to do is when I react to, uh, somebody, especially a friend's piece, I want to make sure I'm doing a good job. So why don't we watch this piece and we'll see how it goes and we'll share our thoughts together on it. And, uh, and that'll be one of the fun things that we do because I haven't seen anybody cover this. It looks like it just came out today. So this is a pretty fresh video. I say, oh, he's a Maoist. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, is he an MLM or is he a Maoist? Which one? Because those are different things. Is he an MLM or is he a Maoist? Hmm. Okay. This is called, uh, this is a video by Bad Mouse called Vosh and the Haunting Specter of Baby Leftism. I want to see what this is all about. Shall we, shall we enjoy together, chat? Let's, let's enjoy together. I have to say that even I was under the impression, despite everything I've seen of him, that Vosh, or Ian, might have at least understood some general basics about racism. After piling through three hours of his debate with Professor Flowers, hmm. that turned out to be wrong. I mean, how- hmm. Okay, uh, an interesting start. A very, uh, very interesting start, for sure. Um, but let's find out. Let's give it a chance. Let's give it a chance. Let's find out what we can find out, okay? How can a person be an oppressor because of their race? Did all the millions of white people in South Africa, like, individually oppress all the black people there? And I can tell you from my experiences online, there are a lot of black people who are pretty goddamn racist. I think it's kind of silly to pretend that there aren't black people who just are kind of shitty to white people in a way- Okay, so far- Way that doesn't have a sort of institutional bias behind it. There is nothing about being white that inherently makes you more racist. Over here in America, there are a lot of black people that are racist against white people. It's not like one tribe ruled America. The tribes that ruled the Americas before we came no, here conquered a bunch of other tribes, tribes yeah, a bunch beforehand. Of people. So does America belong to the tribe that owned it last or the first tribes that we can ever anthropologically determine control the territory? Lua has already done her own response. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything or speak for her, but I had some time on my hands and this debate really annoyed me. So I just wanted to try and talk about a few things. What can I say? I'm an unpredictable man. The reaction that Ian and his fans exhibited when faced with the general assertion that- Okay, I, I find this very weird, first of all, to like, sp try to use people's like, first names if you don't know them. I find that really awkward. Like, that is not a- that is not a meaningful critique of the message of this so far. I just find that very awkward. I would never want somebody to ever use what they thought my IRL name was in a video like that, unless they were my friend my personal friend. That's very strange to me. Um, and also, 
I don't th think that either of those three quotes that were played did a very good job of backing up the idea that Vosh does not understand racism. Um, the idea, like we talked about this during our analysis of the Professor Flowers debate, which is um, the fact that like, yes, people who are themselves marginalized can indeed be racist. Isn't my first name relatively known? Yeah, it kind of is. Some people know it. But still, I don't care. I don't want somebody to use my fucking government name. That's weird, okay? Um, the thing is that, like, I don't think either of those three were very good examples of it. So, yes, some people, um, they were only they were pretty clearly clipped out of the context of the conversation where he was pushing back against PF's assertion that colonialism equals white people. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't only equal white people. But yes, uh, whiteness and and colonialism and racism are are greatly tied together. And I think that there are ways in which you can come to the conclusion that like um, it's a lot harder or a lot different for somebody um, who is in a marginalized racial group to to uh, to engage in racism but we know that this happens we know that there's racism that happens between other uh marginalized racial groups like it's 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 just something that happens so zanzi is going to talk to pf about how colonialism man manifested in ireland a situation where everyone's white so you can take whiteness out of the equation well you actually can't take whiteness out of the equation entirely but that will be an interesting conversation because I think it will reveal what everybody thinks about it. Yes, exactly. Brim Brim 15 says Dave, Dave Chappelle did a whole lot of uh, xenophobia or sinophobia in his new special, like you mentioned the other day. Yes, he did. He engaged in something that I would consider to meet the definition of racism, even, even if you consider the definition of racism to be, uh, you know, r prejudice plus power. Because I think that uh that by manner of uh, uh by, by a matter of comparison that um dave chappelle for example is in a position of power compared to most of the people that he was venting his prejudice against so i think that these three cre these three quotes that were given aren't a very good starting point for this conversation but let's see where it goes that it's not your right to dictate the terms of decolonization to the colonized is actually not too unfamiliar to me because it reminds me of well me when I was a young leftist, I felt particularly uncomfortable by this man. Because if you know, Malcolm X didn't take his fools gladly. He didn't give a shit and he took no prisoners, because fundamentally, he wanted autonomy for his own people, and he didn't want that to be dictated by whites. His manner and content of speaking always made me, as a white dude, feel a bit, you know, I don't know, he says such hostile stuff, you know, he doesn't care about white people, you know, this doesn't work, we gotta work together. Yet, as time went on, I started connecting some of the stuff that he said to the stuff that I see in real life. And I started to understand a little bit better the mindset of minorities. I started listening to more of his work and other people's, like Franz... Okay, but keep in mind that the, this is something that also happened in one of the other videos that was conveniently by a white person critiquing another white person, which is this idea that you understand the mentality of minorities. They... Minorities aren't a monolith. They're, they're not a monolith. This cannot be avoided. That is not just a quippy statement. That is a simple truth. There are great disagreements among... Look at the disagreements that have occurred among... Look, not even talking about racial minorities. Between me and other trans people who have very, very different worldviews than me. This is something that you can't just brush off. Yes, and you cannot make a monolith out of a group to, to conveniently fit your political argument. I think you could make the argument... Um, you could make the argument that uh, that perhaps someone wasn't doing a very good job understanding diverse perspectives or that they weren't understanding a particular perspective. But I don't think that you can just make a blanket statement like all like like I didn't understand the the singular perspective of X marginalized group. I think that's very silly. Yeah, uh, Blair White is a great example with regard to trans stuff, which doesn't map perfectly one to one onto racial stuff. But it, but there are comparisons. It's, it's frustrating, but let's continue.
Fan on. And Didn't somebody come into chat during the analysis comparing Vosh Fla and Flowers to MLK and Malcolm X? Yes, and I jo and I laughed about it because that's a very silly thing to say. James Baldwin. And eventually my opinion on Malcolm X turned from a cowering e to one of hmm, is what it is, right on. Isn't that a bit of a like isn't that a bit of a like uh I don't know. This feels like a self report in a certain way. Doesn't it? A little bit? I don't know. Because I understood, I guess, my place in the world. I understood, yeah, I've got it pretty well off, to be honest. And I got that my when it comes to your world. sense of self, all of the pedantic consistencies never really matter much in the long term. What you want first and foremost is to exist as a human being. I think people got this same anxious, almost offended feeling when No Name said that she didn't want Whitey following her on Twitter anymore. Okay. Um, so that's actually not what No Name really said, honestly. Um, which, again, this feels very weird to me to have a white guy summarize No Name's comment incorrectly. Because No Name didn't say that she didn't want Whitey to follow her on Twitter. In fact, the tweet is right here. And I actually disagree with Vosh's response to No Name's tweet. I actually think No Name's tweet is perfectly fine. Um, and I don't really think there's anything wrong with it. And I feel like Vosh's response to it was way, was way overblown personally. But this is fucking cringe. I find that very cringe to, to take a tweet that's perfectly good in what it is here and then boil it down to don't follow, don't follow me whitey. I, f that feels really fucking weird to me. Ah, no, no name. You've got to work together. No name. Uh, whoa, 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 woke segregation. Ah, Fred Hampton. Yes, because acclaimed black communist rapper No Name has totally never heard of Fred Hampton. Okay. Take a hint. I, I, don't, I don't know what any of this has to do with anything, honestly. It is this I very milk toast, baby's first political education mindset that appears to be very common these days, especially amongst white American lefties, but is also across the pond as well who seem to think that it can all just be solved by what I can only describe as vague gesturing. Let's all work together. And that's not how it works. You can't just claim, yeah, integration, and then by some magic formula, we all just get along. I remember a certain black communist state his absolute disdain for when white pinkos come into black spaces during and after actions and hand out flyers for their org under the banner of yeah let's unite but then are never ever seen again do you understand that that doesn't really seem to fit right there's something very perf somni static says yeah like vosh may have done it too briskly but i but he was trying to make a very valid point about people like pf's rhetoric yeah well that was before the pf chapter though right wasn't the no name thing before the PF chapter? And also, I think that his critique was miss was was poorly aimed. No names, no names take in my opinion is just is perfectly legitimate. There is an attempt sometimes for uh, white leftists to enter active organizational spaces that have already come to like that have already come together. There have already been people doing things, and then be like, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. I think that's a very real thing. Oh, you're talking, yeah, in the PF combo, but I already said my opinions about the PF combo. I think that Vosh, uh, that Vosh made some missteps, but that ultimately PF was not prepared to actually have the conversation that she came into, and she came in guns blazing in a way that I think most people will find, um, imparsable. So, anyway. Let's continue. Formative about it. Uh, pinko means uh no pinko is not a brand pinko is uh is a a off-handed term for basically a fake communist it's like a hippie communist aka pinko commie a a pinko commie was was a term that was used for basically liberal liberal communist larpers back in the day it hasn't been popular for a long time it's very much unite but, pink but because on pink. our terms hence why many socialist people of color prefer the company of other people like them even if their views don't exactly line up, than with white socialists. And it only really takes a quick look at Ian's repertoire to see why that might be. So I'm gonna go a little bit hard on her. I don't give a fuck if you don't like being around white people. He's got this incredibly juvenile. I don't get that. 
I, 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 I don't get, there's not enough context for me to understand what's going on there. Nile gamer bro populist understanding of race. Throughout history, there has been one thing the capitalist class has feared. Workers of different races organizing separately without solidarity. Read history, Lib. That's why strike breakers and business owners have historically encouraged labor unions to racially integrate because it makes them weaker. What is this? What is wrong with this statement? I think it's a little sarcastic, but what is wrong with this? This is like literally a thing that actually happened. A corporate, uh, like, like businesses in the past, bosses in the past would intentionally... Uh, ad would, would intentionally make racial tensions in the workplace worse. We caught Amazon doing it earlier in the year. Yeah, Amazon literally did this earlier in the year. It might have been back in April. Maybe that was what the response was to this was. But Amazon was literally uh, using racial tensions to break up union action in their factories. Amongst many other things. That appears to give off a progressive tone, but in reality it just feels mute and hollow not to mention egoistic. It's not a reactionary perspective to want to not talk to white leftists. It's you being arrogant and starting with the position that I am right, everybody Resistance, come to me. Thank you for me. the gifted sub. Thank oh, you very much. they're not coming to me. Well, then in that case, they must be reactionary. Mm. But of course, it's not- I don't feel like this. I don't feel like this is a, uh, I don't feel like this is a particularly like accurate analysis of what's going on here. I do think there's 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 room to um, to criticize what Vosh said. I just did it two seconds ago. I just don't think this is a fair framing. Just Ian, or, or it's fair systemic. And I think part of this comes down to the way we're often taught about topics like nationalism in school and the media by just simply showing the white boogeyman and not understanding it as a very serious thing that has a lot of complexities and duality to it. If you watch Flower's video, she explains there that there were once various people groups across the contiguous United States who are now just known under the simple moniker of Native American or American Indian. That's because of history. History, power dynamics, and minoritization. These forces created a shared struggle amongst those people, a shared experience, if you will, that coalesced okay. these groups as a nation. Importantly, they- This is not accurate though. This is not accurate. This is not accurate. There is not one single nation. Hold on a second. We can prove this wrong with a fucking Wikipedia search. Look, look at this. Look at this. I can, I can do this this quick. Look, tribal nations. This is from literally National Congress of, of American Indies. There is, there is tribal nation states. There's how many of them are there? Let's look at their little thing. Hold on. Let's look. This is their... Th what are you talking about? There is no single national movement right now. That is not even accurate. Can we get information from this group alone? Like, peoples, native peoples are the essence of our nations. Nations, not one nation. Land, our connection to, to place is both physical and spiritual, and it helps define who we are as people. Culture, traditions, new and old, sustain our societies. Language, family, clan, art, ceremonies, life ways, ways of living. Governance, social organizing and political structures vary from tribal nation to tribal nation based on unique histories, cultures, and worldviews. This is, this is ahistorical right here. What, this is, what he's saying here is false, is definitively false, and also is, is just, li it literally ignores the perspective of the very people he's claiming to argue on defense of. There is, there is not a single national movement. There, there isn't. Many of them don't believe on, but don't believe in a single national movement. That's so frustrating. This is a big problem right here. Still exist. They still exist there. Hell, there's literally tribal politics undermining each other in this state. Muckleshoot has claimed itself to be the true inheritor of the Duwamish tribe, so they're using political power to keep the existing Duwamish tribe from getting recognition. Of course. Again, this is this is making everybody into a monolith. And also, it ignores the fact that there are different struggles between each of these groups. Not that there isn't solidarity to be found between them, but the idea that, that they've unified into a single national movement is not true. That is definitively not true. And most importantly, there's somebody else there who isn't part of that group for a plethora of reasons. Ask yourself the reason why we call people who live in Britain British rather than, say, Britonic. It's because the... Brit what? 
oh god, UK UK people need to stop talking about about American politics for fuck's sake. This doesn't even make this makes no sense. I'm about to I, I don't know, let's find out. Let's let's fucking do. Tonic tribes physically don't exist as a concept anymore. They've been absorbed into the dustbin of history through conquests, miscegenation, and the lack of a dominant power to contrast with. It doesn't justify any such horrific acts of history, but it's simply a fact. They are- What? Is this an ant- wait, okay, hold on a second. Uh, I don't know how to feel about this. It, so he's comparing- British tribes to Native American tribes? This is very weird. This is very are now gone weird. as a people, and they can't really be reconciled. You attempt to try and revive an ancient culture as your identity. You can try. Even if you trace your ancestry back over 2,000 years. I don't think this argument is making... This is not what he wants to say. Holy shit, this is not what he wants to say. Just, hold on, let me show you something real quick. Hold on. Okay? So the parallel that he's drawing between these people, who we're supposed to laugh at, right? Because he's saying these are the goofy people trying to reclaim their stuff. He drew these people in parallel to Native Americans. This is a terrible argument. This is a, this is a, I, 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 it can't be his intention. It can't be his intention, but like, this is a terrible argument to make. He's placing these people that he's framing as LARPers in, in parallel to the individual tribes that are preserving their identity in America, which is a huge part of Native American tribal politics. Oh boy, this is going to be really bad. Is It doesn't work because there isn't an equivalent dynamic involved. So you end up looking like a weirdo, and not the oppressed. Self-appointed druids are not under attack in this country. That's what it's all about. Who's being affected now? Not some stupid red ice media level discussion on who owned it last. So when these groups form as a nation, their inherent experience, in contrast to the other, takes on a fundamentally different character. This is, this is very odd so far. I find this to be a very, uh, I, I find this to be a very poor critique so far. Let me ask you another question. Name me a white nationalism, or an English nationalism, or a French, Aussie, German, American nationalism that fundamentally cements its beliefs as left-leaning. You can't. That's because the inherent nature of majority powerful nations leans itself towards what? vulgar characteristics. Like spoiled toddlers getting their toys taken away, they lash out at the slightest glimpse of fairness. You go to a country- I- that's not even- that's not even an argument. I don't even know how to respond to that. Country like Ireland, however, a former colony, and notice how the nature of Irish nationalism, or republicanism, historically carried with it a very different standing to that of its neighbour. Go even further down the rung, there are even more pressing issues that need solving, and thus the nature of these groups fold themselves towards solving those present injustices. Whether a group actually calls itself a nationalism or not, it doesn't take away the very material reality that emerges when one is of a shared culture, history, or language. If you're a white American, you can watch all manner of American media and get that funny feeling inside. That same feeling cannot always be said for others. It comes That funny feeling isn't a good thing. That nationalistic fervor is a bad thing. We acknowledge that these nationalistic structures are not a good thing. What the fuck is he? What the fuck? This is an incoherent video. I just, I just don't get it. I don't understand what's being set up here. That funny feeling is cringe, yeah. What? 
I, I okay. I I want to I want to try and make sense of this, but so far this is a very weak argument. I did not think this was the angle that was going to be approached. My honestly, I thought the angle was going to be much more along the lines of what John the Duncan did. So having watched this so far, I think John the Duncan's video is stronger, even though I do still feel like that John the Duncan missed the mark on that video. But most people here probably haven't seen that one yet. So. Scottish Green Party, Scottish Socialist Party, and Northern Independence Party. Parties that are on the left and will be classified as nationalists in the UK. Yeah, I recognize that. I recognize there are nationalist, leftist nationalist movements, but I don't understand what he's what he's trying to say here. This is just, this is just, I, I, I don't know. I don't, there was no point made there. It was just that, like, why are there no left-wing nationalist movements, but that he had previously just mentioned left-wing nationalist movements. I don't know what he's talking about here. It was a great shock to discover that when Gary Cooper was killing off the Indians and you were rooting for Gary Cooper, that the Indians were you. You live in a country in which the dominant hegemony represents and glorifies people like you. And whether you disagree with that hegemony or not, just saying that doesn't matter, you're still influenced by it. That's why the calls of people to say, oh, it's nothing doesn't really matter because you still have a home to go back to. You st Nobody says, it has no one in this conversation has ever said, oh, it's nothing. I think that's very bad, uh, bad faith. Still have a nation by which you can rest on. In summary, status quo nationalism almost always bends to the right, but in oppressed ones, you get a mix. Um... We'll say though that even a vulgar trend from an oppressed nationalism is not and never the same as its polar opposite. Take a very known example. The Nation of Islam is of course well known for its highly homophobic, sexist and frankly weird views. I bet even Ian might label them as racist towards whites. <laughs> but in their position as an oppressed that smuckle was embarrassing. Pressed group, they are still in the mission of helping black self-determination. Be that in prisons, drug rehab, and housing and employment projects. Those are all things that speak to the people they're talking to, and just as a matter of fact- Wait, but- In fact, they often do it a lot better than many communist groups in the United States. So, yeah, think about that. So that is a very easy way of understanding why there is a difference between black and white nationalism, and how the common reduction of it into a vile mass of in-group and out-group dynamics just doesn't hold up. But I don't think that that was, like, I don't think that was, an, that doesn't, that doesn't track, that doesn't follow. The idea that, that Nation of Islam uh, is really anti-Semitic but sometimes advocates for good things does not say anything about it does not actually say anything about nationalist movements. That's just, there's no conclusion there. There's, there's, there's been a step missed. Because there are very genuine claims made by one group that simply doesn't compare to the other. It's not all relative like some seem to think it is. Such claims are decidedly liberal. Wait, hold on, no they're not. Gay people in Saudi Arabia are just a product of Western degeneracy that feeds in through global media. Um, in reality, it's actually a, a product of white international um, uh, uh, cultural bias that is infesting the people in Saudi Arabia. So given that, given they're basically a symptom of Western degeneracy, do you think they not have a right to address that in whatever way they think is most culturally effective? The great thing about reality is that you can wheedle out the difference between truths and untruths. Look at the what, historical what you're record saying. and determine who's colonized. What or okay, Bad Mouse here has no right whatsoever to claim anything about his like about uh, the truth versus non-truth, seeing as how he alleged that the Native American movement in the United States is a purely nationalistic movement that is united behind a single nation, when that is definitively not true. And anybody who's ever engaged with indigenous politics would know that that's the case. This is just... Ba this is just he's just wrong about a lot of things so far he's just been wrong about the facts well i've we fucking brought it up on here that even the more even the more liberal uh organizations recognize that there are multiple independent nations that all have different views on 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 these political issues
you're not. saying like people are going to say stuff and then there's history there's things that actually happen it isn't to say that all of this exists in infinity when times change well so do the dynamics if it goes past its necessity then it will become vulgar and dogmatic but like i said we live in a world made up of nations and until that physically goes away anything else is again just vague gesturing no oh Oh, we get to call out some fucking statist propaganda right here. That right there is statist propaganda. That is simply not true. See, I strongly disagree with this position. Uh, we live in a world of nations and states, but that does not mean that we have to engage in a in a conflict of nation state uh uh. uh a, a, a direct nation state conflict in fact i think that perpetuates the problem the answer to nation states is refusing to engage in the nation state in my opinion most places i think there are rooms for, i think there's grounds to say that some nationalistic based struggles have had successes i just don't think it's the great answer was this the dude in chat that likened pro flowers versus vosh to malcolm versus mlk i don't know if it was but this is very this is a this is a you can see this person's bias leaking in the idea that um the world is a world of nations and states and that we must engage on the terms of nation states is not I, I that is not you have to you have to actually evidence that claim that is a massive massive claim yes the world is currently chopped up in all kinds of ways by nation states but do we just sit there and say yes all nation states have a just claim to the land that they claim is in their boundaries that's absurd that ignores literally autonomous movements we this guy's arguing against land back right now. So in a situation such as Israel-Palestine, we can now better understand the dynamics involved in the stakes they play. Palestinians, which remember doesn't exclude indigenous Jews and other men and minorities, are as of current the indigenous group of today. Not because they lived there for a while, but because of a shared experience through contrast to a dominant group. Just like the Maori are indigenous to New Zealand, even though they only arrived some 300 years before the Europeans did. Jewish people, of course, still have the right to self-determination. They still exist today as a minoritized group. What that does not suddenly grant them, however, is rule over a land because their people happened to live there some time ago. Wait. This, he shot himself in the foot with this example here. He shot himself in the foot. This framework, his framework doesn't work to an analyze Israel-Palestine. He, he's just demonstrated that the nation-state example doesn't do a good job of explaining the situation in Israel-Palestine. That you can, that, that a, a otherwise marginalized group can be put in charge of a nation-state that then goes on to commit genocide. Yeah, this is this is this is this is in, this is an incoherent video. I, I genuinely mean that. I so far this is an incoherent video. There wasn't an apartheid-esque situation until the lines were drawn by the settlers, and arguably, you what do you think? Who do you think draws the lines everywhere? Who do you think draws the lines? Nation states. Nation states draw arbitrary lines, often around people who had no desire to be a part of that nation state. This happens constantly on an almost daily basis. How many times have people in rural areas suddenly received news that they now belong to another country? This is the problem of the pure of the of this purest statist approach to things. It completely erases the individuals involved with this. It completely erases the groups of people involved in this. And also, it's pr it's predicated on an absolutely foolish understanding of American history. You could also point to many other lands that also hold Jewish claim. Most notably, Iberia, which flourished prior to the Inquisition. Somehow, I don't think this logic would suddenly pan out for any other group, would it? Drawing lines in the sand to a country that you don't live in, to which there is no colonial dynamic involved, is hardly a decolonial project. Hold it on. Wait a second. Let's take this one step further. He says, drawing lines around a country that you don't live in is hardly a decolonial project. Then why is drawing lines around any place that you don't live in a, a considered a, de a decolonial project?
This is part of the problem with this analysis. This is part of the problem, in my opinion, with the nationalistic focus, which is that in any case where you have a state drawing lines, you have an entity, a construct, by the way, not even an individual person. You have a state construct that draws lines over territories that it does not actually inhabit over people that it does not actually represent. This is a problem even in democracy. Let me ask you this. Did you ever have a choice in being a part of the United States of America? Or were you made a citizen and also made held to its laws from the moment you were born? This is the problem with this fucking analysis. It's stupid. The American state decided that you are an American. They decide the state said you are our property. This his analysis doesn't deal with this at all. He just fucked himself over. This is the, this whole video has been himself shooting himself in the foot. Is it? Come on. And if you want to read a little bit more about this on the very unique nature of modern day Zionism, then I would recommend Ilan Pape's book, 10 Myths About Israel. So this is why the cries of ethno state that has basically become a red scare amongst many leftists simply doesn't compute. Literally. So wait. Does he not, does he or does he not think that Israel is an ethno state? Every country that deposed its former colonizers just became another state. Haiti, Jamaica, Kenya, Algeria, Tanzania, DRC, Sudan, Egypt, Zambia, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Ireland. As far as I know, there is no ethnic validation necessary to go and live in these places, believe me. The only country of any that represents that today is Israel. Now, I've just been speaking about this for 10 minutes or so, so just to hammer home this point a little bit more, after all of that, after all of the nuance that I've described involved in this- I'm sorry, but that was not useful nuance. Saying words that aren't actually true and making claims that you don't back up with evidence is not adding nuance. I am very unimpressed with this analysis. Discussion. This is what Ian is interested in. Do you think it's possible for a white person to live ethically in South Africa? Do you think the black people, who are by far the majority, have a right to remove the white population? What if a person who's black in a black ethnostate falls in love with a white person? Can they raise mixed children in a black ethnostate? What if people thought within a country that the only way for them to escape colonialism was through the wholesale slaughter of the white people who live there? If the third world decided they could do that, but it probably wouldn't work. The only way to truly succeed would be global conquest through military or nuclear arms. Do you think that would be defensible as a sort of final oh, way of eliminating the colonization? You'll notice during this video that I haven't focused much on it. And that's because it's clearly opportunity. Okay, that joke, I don't even know what the joke was there. I don't know what it was. I couldn't understand what that meme was. Dynastic. I figured that this debate would be addressing some of Ian's more milk toast attitudes that Flower brought up in her videos. But instead, Ian is deliberately extrapolating to stupid hypotheticals that have little to no historical basis as a way to disprove the very obvious difference laden in oppressed nationalisms. Obviously. Little to no basis? I don't think that you can claim that. I really don't think that you can claim that easily, right? I mean, after all, there was at one point in which China was colonized by Britain, but now you have a Chinese state that is enacting cultural genocide on an indigenous group within the boundaries. And, and also you'll notice that very interesting with regard to China is that they decided that Xinjiang, which is the name they gave for a place that is called New Province. They re erased the indigenous name of that place and they named it New Province of in in the Chinese in Mandarin. Um, that that they are replicating the same problems that other colonial states did. So this is not like a a, a, a non. Uh, this is not like an imagined thing that's happened. We've seen this happen. We've seen this happen even between groups of fucking white people in Europe. We've seen uh, 
before the concept of race even existed, that there are examples of groups that were at one point repressed that took over and rebuilt a structure that that uh, enacted gen sometimes generations later that same violence that they were subjected to. Thank you, Kbot, for the tier two sub. Thank you very, very much. I deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Let's continue. I, I just, his claims are not, his claims about history, I feel, are very, very tenuous. Or, or not just tenuous. They're very, they're just blanketly wrong. Ian knew that he was going to be pushed on his bad opinions, so it would make sense to instead counter with what is a very mute point. It's not like his fans wouldn't just move on from his response to something in a heartbeat, despite stating numerous times that she's not pro-genocide, Lua doesn't get that same treatment. He does this a lot, if you'll notice, most memorably justifying pedophilia as consistent with buying com- Here we go. ...computer products because he didn't want to lose to the vegans. Because we, we buy shit all the time that's made the silicon farmed by slaves in Africa, plastic made in, like, you know, factory farms that pollute the earth, like that sort of thing. But we don't impugn each other for it. Um, okay, so if you were to... So, you know, there's pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography. Mm -hmm. Would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even though mm -hmm. they're directly supporting child rape? Yeah. I think that's it's uh, it's hypocritical. You can do this extrapolation in any kind of way. My culture is very important to me as an oppressor. I'm not even going to comment on this because it's already been addressed a hundred times. You all know, everybody knows, you can go find Vosh's own video on this where he explains the greater context of the conversation they were having. I agree that this was that that was the ba a bad conversation to try and have on stream, but I know what he was talking about. He he's talking about the fact that um, we regularly just defer guilt for buying horrific products all the time. Okay, like all the time, and I've accused you and myself of doing this exact thing. If you're watching this right now, chances are you have bought something. You have contributed directly to slave. You are almost guaranteed. To have uh, um, contributed directly to sla child slave labor. Yes, that's right. You, watching this right now on a computer or a phone, there is a almost, un almost guaranteed chance that whatever you bought was directly funding child slave labor. So while I recognize that the, the way that that was argued is really stupid, the fundamental concept being discussed is what we decide is bad consumption. Oh, chocolate? If you buy Nestle, you're fucked. You are, oh, if, you're, if your angle of morality is consumptive focused, if you've ever bought a Nestle chocolate bar, you're fucked. It's, yeah, coffee beans, Jesus, palm oil. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me show you this. Let me just show you something real quick. Let me, let me bring up something for all of you, okay? Um, yeah, here we go. So palm oil is in almost every sauce packet you have ever consumed in your entire life if you have consumed a uh, a sauce packet from any restaurant in america and many in other nations as well you have consumed a fuckload of palm oil and i just want you to know um <laughs> here we go one report indicated numerous allegations of human rights viola violations in the production of prom palm oil across Indonesia and Malaysia, including b exposure to hazardous pesticides, child labor, rape and sexual abuse, and unsafe carrying loads. These incidents have received no response by the company or police or are left unreported because victims fear retaliation from their abusers. The chemicals used in the pesticides, such as paracot and glyphosate, glyphosate have been linked to diseases such as Parkinson's disease and cancer. While only 5% of the world's vegetable oil farmland is used for palm plantations, palm cultivation produces 38% of the world's, world's total vegetable oil supply. In terms of oil yield, a palm plantation is 10 times more productive than soybean, soy flour, or rapeseed cultivation because of the palm fruit and kernel both provide usable oil. Now, you can go and you can look into all of the atrocities that have been revealed about palm oil over the recent years. But yes, there are child slave plantations all across. Oh, wait, here we go. 
I didn't even look at this one. I missed a segment. Here we go. Social. In addition to environmental concerns, palm oil development in regions that produce it have also led to social significant social conflict. Regions with fast-growing palm oil production have experienced significant violations of indigenous land rights, influxes of I illegal immigrant labor and labor practices, and other alleged uh, human rights violations. The palm oil industry has both positive and negative impacts on workers, indigenous peoples, and residents of the palm oil producing communities. With a bunch of citations. This was written by the palm oil lawyers right here. However, in some cases, palm oil plantations have developed lands without consultation or compensation of the people inhabiting that land, resulting in social conflict. The use of illegal immigrants in Malaysia has also raised concerns about working conditions within the palm industry. This is... The palm industry is worldwide notorious for, for uh, engaging in slavery. There are whole articles that have been written about this that aren't even just going to that. Yeah, look at this. You search palm oil. Look at this. Hold on. I want to show you. You just search palm oil on, on Google. And the first thing that you get is the World Wildlife Foundation article um, on WW... Uh, uh, the, sorry, the World Wildlife Foundation's article on palm oil. Palm oil has been and continues to be a major driver of deforestation of some of the world's most biodiverse forests, destroying the habitat of already endangered species like the orangutan, pygmy elephant, and Sumatran rhino. This forest loss, coupled with the conversion of carbon-rich peat soils, are throwing out millions of tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Yeah. There are also remains some major exploitation of workers and child labor. Labor. incredible and of course if you go back to the google page let's just look at the top stories about palm oil this is just for a search as you can see of palm oil a fifth of indonesia's palm oil sites lie in forest real estate says greenpeace modi's game change changer of p palm oil push raises concerns for indian forests and women guatemala's growing in uh palm oil I industry fuels an indigenous land fight in Malaysia, in Malaysia's Johor, mines and palm oil plantations are replacing the forests. Brutality, corruption, tax evasion detailed an undercover sting of palm oil executives. Hidden camera footage exposes bribery for palm oil in Papua New Guinea. Nestle and Kellogg's linked to shocking palm oil abuse in Papua New Guinea. So yeah. I know this is a big tangent to go off on, but I hate that clip being thrown around because it completely ignores the actual context of what was being discussed there, which is that Americans, including vegans, often let themselves off the hook for incredibly egregious actions that th it is uncomfortable for them to, to acknowledge in the name of a gotcha, like what we just witnessed here. So, yeah. Best minority. Oh, so what if your culture supports child brides, huh? Then that's suddenly okay? Hmm? Hmm? Ever thought of that? Obviously, we wouldn't yes, support that. Obvious, like I've said, there are plenty of reactionary practices in any culture. But c c can we just, like, try and engage in discussion for a second? Does that suddenly mean that the whole concept of culture being very integral to oppressed groups, in light of the appropriation and demonization by the majority, is now somehow dismissed and proved wrong because Irish laddie just threw in something straight out of left field. It really takes me back five or six years to when anti-feminists thought that they could debunk decades of research on social conflict theory in just a single video. And it really reeks of this no black rights, no gay rights, no women's rights, just human rights. I think this is an incredibly, an incredibly bad faith interpretation. I think this is like the worst, the most uncharitable c characterization of the argument so far. This is a massive stretch. Also a bit weird that he put WAMs here like this, but he, it's a little weird to me. It's liberal bile. And it is completely devoid of any nuance whatsoever. Also, Vosh has done, like, video after video after video criticizing class reductionists. Vosh is not exactly... Look, for, with, with, I, you can have whatever problems you want with Vosh, but Vosh is not exactly the person who says just human rights. He doesn't do that. Like, that's like, that's like Peter Coffin's thing. 
Because Wait, black fuck people... black culture. I don't give a fuck about preserving culture. Yeah, well, maybe you should. I know that statement might make you sound very ethereal, pretty funky. Again, a statement that I disagree with, by the way, from Vosh, but that also is being taken, out, like, explicitly out of context and is not being uh, honestly presented. What he was talking about is that he doesn't think that you can cut a, a, a culture down to a very specific thing, and he doesn't care about preserving uh, imagined versions of culture that instead that you should preserve specific aspects of culture, but that culture is an inevitably changing thing. Yeah, I, I, uh, did they type a women or did they type a wombs? Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a weak, a weak argument. Ian out there, right? Well, to me, you sound like an edgy YouTube atheist. <sighs> Have we entered a leftist dark age recently? Why have so many people suddenly adopted such a reductive idea of very complex issues? This Nothing. is what happens when you put winning and semantics over trying to engage in a discussion. Do we really think that this video was engaging in a discussion? Do we really feel like this video was attempting to engage in a discussion? Because I don't think so. Does that remind you of anything? <laughs> I would like to briefly touch on this comic because it's a great example of how quickly something can go from being a very useful critique into an unnecessary dogma. On its own, the comic is good. It's explaining how obtuse it is to not think about the greater dynamics in society and instead just use the superficial points at hand to declare victory. But over time, this comics use has gone from getting people to think into this is what you should think and this is how you should respond. Okay, this is, uh, this is a level of terminal onlineness. I diagnose bad mouse with terminally online. And as a terminally online streamer, as all streamers are terminally online, because our entire jobs are take place on the internet. This is stupid. If you think that this tiny comic that is sometimes posted as a meme is like a new dogma, you need to go outside and think about some things. You need to not even go outside. Just look on the internet outside of your immediate Twitter feed, please, for the love of God. Yes, I am doing the as the online idiot finder general. The chortling is really embarrassing, but let's keep going. So, streamers earning large amounts of money and fame might be counterproductive to the overall struggle. The comic. I've seen this sentiment on far too many occasions. Why is there two versions of the exact same comic here? And I always find it really depressing. Do you see how all the nuance is, is now one. gone? Number one. All talk of thinking about how our financials and fame might affect our decision making. It really is no surprise that such a sentiment would be popular as a justification for not doing anything or holding any standards. Wait, what are you talk? What is this? The response to we should do something is the comic? Um, uh, yeah, but... Oh, I feel like we're going to end up having the vegan discussion again. <sighs> I don't have the I don't have the language yet. I need to figure it out. Uh they're having the guy in the well say the comic. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's recursive. Um thinking no, it's not worth talking about because Matt Boar's comic. Don't bother engaging. Matt I've n I don't to be fair, I do not see people engage using that comic that way. Like I I really I really don't. I don't really see the comic being used that way in the same way that he's describing. Um, but I guess maybe some people do. Matt Boars comic. Don't bother analyzing. It sounds, what it sounds like to me is that Matt Boars has gotten under this guy's skin. Matt Boars comic. And as a final remark to all these genocide support accusations, since I'm sure Ian's fans love to talk about logic, well, here's some for you. Not saying yes or no doesn't mean that you therefore support the opposite. Simply that the answer is not yes or no. Mm. Libertarians love to posit the self-ownership principle. 
that if you don't own your body, that therefore means that somebody else does. But in reality, the answer is much more simple. Nobody does. People are missing the point when it comes to the- I'm sorry, can we try this again? I need to understand what was being said there. Hold on a second. Yes or no. Libertarians love to posit the self-ownership principle, that if you don't own your body, that therefore means that somebody else does. But in reality, the answer is much more simple. Nobody does. What does this have to do with anything? I don't get what this has to do with anything. And also, like, what does that mean? I'm trying, I'm trying to understand how this applies. And, uh, I don't, I don't get it. How does this apply at all? And also, what does that imply? Is he talking about, like, ownership from a perspective of property ownership? I don't get it. I don't get it. People are missing the point when it comes to the statement that the colonized do not have to live with their colonizers. It's not to say which is right and which is wrong, simply that colonialism digs its own gravediggers, and said gravediggers are not to blame for that. Colonialism is a fucked up issue, drawn out the point when it comes to the statement that the colonized do not have to live with their colonizers. It's not to say which is right and which is wrong, simply that colonialism digs its own gravediggers and- Colonialism digs its own gravediggers? Why did that end up in the final cut? That's like a- that doesn't make any sense. I know what he's trying to say, but- but why did you- why did you leave that in the final cut, bro? Said gravediggers are not to blame for that. Colonialism is a fucked up issue, drawn out with horrendous baggage and trauma that doesn't always leave the most desirable of options in the minds of the colonized. And yet, despite all of this, I highly doubt that if Ireland were to become peak Ireland that you would suddenly have Catholics and Southerners going down to hunt all the Brits and Prods from Ulster, would you? Somehow, I doubt that's going to happen. I wonder why. And rather than me having to do all your homework for you, you might want to find out the answer for that question yourself. People uh, like Ian will always try and claim that they are only being objective. Well, to the native, objectivity is always against him. And I take those words with you if I were you, even if for the sake of arguments, Professor Flower's point here was a little bit flawed. Why exactly? Would you therefore take the views of Ian like some sort of sacred testament, as most of his fans evidently appear to do? When um, is that? That that really sounds like another jump. And someone makes remarks like this. I mean, you can argue logistics on this. No part of America is going to be given over to black people. You move to Africa, where no country is better in total than America is in terms of socioeconomic achievement. Probably not. I don't know. Are black people in Africa safe? It seems like they're not, because they die more than black people do over here. But your economy is going to be buckled under the knee of America. I was just wondering how you felt about black people who are racist against white people. This is also what modern Nazis say about Jews in America. It's literally trying to have your own self determination. That's what it That's is. That's what, the what white of nationalists what I'm ask about. for. Right. Right there. Self-determination is the dog whistle that they use when talking about ethnostates. Does none of that language give off awfully familiar- Okay, I, I know this tweet because I'm very familiar with it, but this editing is ass. This is- this editing is ass. I gotta critique the actual craft going on here of video making. Just poof. Just terrible. This says, the wise man bowed his head and said, there's actually zero difference between good and bad things. You imbecile, you fucking moron. Yeah, this is just ass editing. Talking about ethnostates. Does none of that language give off awfully familiar vibes? Does none of that mindset not raise an eyebrow? Does it not scream of a certain first world centric thinking? Does it not, for that matter, seem incredibly simplistic and juvenile? The lack of any response from people who take in these words tells me quite a lot about the nature of the people that we're dealing with. This is the problem with the baby leftist mindset. 
It is a highly smug and self-satisfied understanding of the world that is hostile to any critical analysis of its own chauvinist characteristics, because to do so, by its very presence, would wreck it. And if that happens, then that is a very grave moment for Vosch. The most wretched Why? of this whole thing, though, is the fact that even if Ian decided, by some divine encounter, to go back on all of his words, and change his mind, and reassess his positions, he still wins. Ian's audience would adapt and soon follow his party line. How ironic. Feeling validated because their lord and master has now given them the green light. And yet, all of those who made him change his mind in the first place would be cast into general obscurity, whilst Ian grew ever more popular. Hell, even his fans might use this change as a way to say, See, haters, he did change his mind. See, are you going to be happy now? <gasps> Recuperation is certainly Baby. not something inherent to corporations, Baby. that's for sure. Truly, there is no better endorsement of Vosh than a protest against Vosh. If you are a fan of Ian, and you feel like some of what I've said here- Then why? <laughs> why did you make a video in response to Vosh? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, that was really stupid. Um, holy shit, uh, this guy's a dumbass. Uh, I don't think that this person made a single actual argument about any of the topics said, except for to assert that na that the only way that you can you can think about things is nationalism which makes me think that there is a ulterior motive to po posting this video this video seems to me more less to be about uh defeating vosh or whatever and more to be about um more to be about asserting statism as the only solution and also just absolutely lying about the history of native americans uh, I would, oh god, this, this video is so stupid. But, like, guys, if you just need anything that shows this entire video's, uh, shit is fucked, just, just let's, let's put a little image up on the screen here. This video's shit is fucked beyond all recognition. Lee. And, and this is probably the best example of it right here. This frame right here. The idea that all Native Americans have coalesced into a single national front is not true in fact even with specific regard to land back there is a lot of tension between capitalistic land back solutions which involve basically giving parcels of land over to specific groups of native american leadership or or holdings or trusts or tribal governments versus people who say no we reject the idea of private property we want this land the land back is saying no we are restoring this to the way that it was used before when it was shared and used by the people who need the land not cut out into parcels by oil corporations and states so I am not an expert on land back, not even close, okay? I'm not even close to an expert on land back, but I know for a fact that this frame right here is complete and utter bullshit. Uh, Sober Flote says, the Seminole tribe split in half over arguments about land ownership, identity, and money. Yes. He also claimed pagans aren't discriminated against, uh, that discrimination against them doesn't matter. That was fun. I just think he's, I just think he doesn't know what he's talking about. Keep in mind that in that part, he was drawing a parallel between what he called cringy pagans to Native Americans. He was comparing, he made a failed comparison. He compared in his example, Native Americans to people that he said don't matter. Why would you do that? What a stupid argument. What a stupid video. Wow. That was, uh, that was trash. That was shockingly trash. Alright. That was interesting.